Hey guys, we're back for another video, and welcome to the PC build. And yeah, we're finally here. Got all the parts, and I guess we'll start with the case. Ooh. I'll get it for you. Yes. Okay. And we are assisted here by a friend. Uh, of mine. How you doing? Okay. So, and I Grand finally Lord. got all the parts thanks to Black Friday for technical difficulties. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Put it on the ground, I'll hold it down to you. Okay. Yes. I personally love NZXT cases. Uh, they have a really nice build quality. Some of them are a little expensive. Uh, luckily, this one's more in the affordable range. Uh, the main reason we picked this specific case is, you know, it's got a very slim profile. It's not too large, but it's enough to house all the parts if you want to show them what uh, Brandon's picked. <laughs> It. So, I mean, if you open it up inside, see that there's plenty of room there for what we've got. I mean, it's nothing crazy. You're not going to be able to put, like, a custom water cooler in here, but, you know, it'll do what it needs to do. And the best part of it is, you know, if he's going somewhere like a like a LAN party, you know, he'll be able to take the case with him. So, all right, Brandon, why don't you show us some of the other parts you picked out? All right, so let's go from left to right. So this is the first thing, probably most important. This is the Intel Core i7-7770, no, 4770K, sorry. And it was kind of expensive on my part, but I managed to get it. It is very powerful. And yeah, so that's the first one. So this is a disk drive. It is a Blu-ray drive from Asus. And there isn't really much to explain. It's just writes Blu-ray drive, discs. That drive. As you can see here, Brandon has the Coolmax ZU series 800 watt power supply. The reason he went with an 80 plus bronze was because he wanted to make sure that the you know the power supply had at least 80 percent efficiency. Uh, it is an Intel based processor, so there's not that much of a power draw as it would be with AMD. But you know it's still good to always have that you know that little extra. Every little bit helps, especially with this build. The reason we went with something like 800 watts instead of like a 750 or a 600 watt is because you know he. We'll show you later on the graphics card that we picked, and you know we left a little bit of headroom for if he wants to add a second one later on. All right, this is our motherboard from Asus yet again, and this is what we're going to be plugging everything into. Obviously, it is the Z87-A. What do I say about it other than that? Okay, so the graphics card we picked for this build is the GTX. Uh, 760 by Asus. Now the reason we moved this card over, you know, like an AMD based card or even another Nvidia card was, you know, it was one of the the lower end Kepler based GPUs out there, but you know it was still at a high enough price point that we were actually able to get the shield for a hundred dollars less, which is always great. And uh, you know we liked what we're seeing with these new Asus monitors that are supposed to be coming out that are also going to be using G-Sync. So we figured you know to stay current and to get the best performance you know, we would go with a GTX. So this is our one terabyte hard drive. Nothing really else to say about that, so, yep. It's blue! <laughs> and we've also got our RAM right here from G-Skill. This is eight gigabytes, four times two. Nothing else to say about that either. Well, he knows math, that's good. Yes, I know a lot of math. And this is the solid state drive. Now this I picked because there are a lot of people out there that are like, why go for a solid state? I mean, it's just more money. But I've heard some really good things about them. How if you were to put your operating system on here, the whole thing would run quite a lot faster. Well, not the whole thing, just, you know, operating system. And I chose the 840 Evo, 120 gigabytes. Now, part of the other reason we also picked the solid state drive was because, you know, if Brandon decided he wanted to do some drive caching, you know, it would help out a little bit there. Uh, mostly, he just bought it because, you know, he heard it makes your computer turn on in 10 seconds and uh, he got really excited. So, yeah. We're not going to write that. Mm. The first thing to always put in is power supply. I don't care what anybody else says, it makes cable management so much easier when you don't have everything else in the PC. Now, normally we would be testing everything beforehand to make sure that none of the parts are DOA, but we already did that. I don't 
don't know if you can see that. This is what's called a semi-modular power supply. So you still have cables on it, but then you can also pick and choose if you need to add anything else. Uh, they're not as convenient as fully modular power supplies, but for the price point, you can't really be it. Tighten these screws in all the way. You want to do each one about halfway. This way, you actually fit properly. Yeah, it's not as bad as that. Pull this up the back. Oh, lovely cables. Alright, hope to God everything's it. It would have been fine the way it was, which was we had it with the fan right side up. The only thing was that would have put all of the cables actually away from the case instead of to the case, which is what I usually prefer. So we're actually going to turn the fan upside down, and we're going to have the fan exhausting heat out the bottom instead of into the machine. Now, again, we do have the rubber fit, the rubber standings to make sure that it doesn't vibrate. So we're going to go and throw it into the bottom, and this one we can route all the cables directly through. Now, normally there's a rubber grommet here. Um, Brandon seems to have misplaced it, but that, that's besides the point. Okay, now we're going to feed everything through this box. Now, the reason we're doing it where you know you really can't see any of the cables because it does give you better airflow to have, well actually, it's pretty obvious why. If you have cables in the way, then it restricts the airflow. So naturally, the more you don't see the cables, the less they're in the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn around to the other side. Okay, first thing, we're gonna take our eight pin connector. I'm gonna push it up here, right. We're gonna feed it up through the top. This way it can be situated right where the motherboard is. There. <coughs> now we're just going to leave these situated where they are. It's not really a big deal right now. Okay. Let's get a up there. This is step one of cable management. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna come in, we'll do it this way. Okay, now we're going to take the motherboard stand off, so we're going to screw those in. If you don't mind uh, unboxing the uh, motherboard for me. For those of you at home, never throw your motherboard on the table. You should also be wearing, see I'm wearing a grounding bracelet, he's not wearing anything. <laughs> now the reason you want to wear a grounding bracelet is this way, no static shock your motherboard. I just cursed. Bleep that out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the power of editing. Hold that. Hold that. I'm just going to do a quick fit, just to see where we need everything to go. Looks like it fit pretty well. Any piece of cardboard works. <clears throat> right, so we're going to talk about this. Just need this up. 
I'm guessing they're going to be 20s all. Yeah, yeah, but if you have a missing set, then play the explosive. I'm guessing they're all identical, so you don't need a piece. A1 and slot A1. Yeah, that's fine, but you also need to make sure you only have a number of them. Yeah, make sure you're always on. Well, you guys want to make sure you're always on. That's all I'm on. Yep. That corresponds with the holes here. So, there's no need for one there. Throw one. Throw one right there. Now, uh, we're going to leave the dust filter on there until the end of the build. Uh, we're also, you'll also notice we did not put the bracket on for the processor yet for the, uh, the heat sink. And the reason why is luckily there is a cutout on the back of this. And that specifically is for, you know, if you want to change out the, uh, the bracket, it's not going to really be an issue. You're not going to have to take the whole build apart. You can just access from the back. So we're going to seat this bad boy in there. Okay. Brand, if you can just hold that. Yeah, I got just exactly like that. Don't let go. You switched the bit on me. God damn it. Good thing it didn't get jammed again. My fix didn't take off. I wasn't out there. Just post for you. Just right now, they are making this thing cold. Okay. Now you don't have to do this with two people. It does make your life easier though. So, I mean, I could just do this holding the board by myself, but this isn't a really magnetic screwdriver. So, you don't have those luxuries. Switch the board There you go. Once I put that one, I can probably go. Okay, so if you remember earlier in the video, uh, I showed you about the first step of cable routing. It's like, that ain't going in very well. There. Okay, so, <laughs> now, one of the cables was that 8-pin. This cable right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bend it. Just like angle, we're going to pop that right. Come on. Backwards? Yeah, it's backwards. <laughs> okay. Right in the place. There we go. So instead of having a long cable going directly from the power supply up across the motherboard, getting in the way, we actually have it routed in the back. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this cable. If you want to go around me, this way you can show up to the other side. We're going to feed this through. Where is the. Right there. So we're going to go ahead and feed this through. Slant. I'm going to seat that right where she belongs. Apply a little bit of pressure. Okay. So, now, yeah, we're go through. yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now we've got the power directly to the board without any of that dangling. So, we're going to come back around. We're going to start the beginning of our cable management. So, you know, we're not going to do anything too crazy. We've done step two of the cable management, which was, doesn't seem like much, but, you know, we added the first couple zip ties. We, we cleaned up everything in the back just enough. So, while we're in the back, it's like, okay. Such a small space for the I know, right? 300 and something value. There's your processor. That is so small. For that much money. Okay, now because this is just a push pin, uh, it's a stock cooler. I don't really recommend them, but for the current build, I mean, he's not going to be overclocking, so it'll do what it needs to do. So we're, there's no, there actually isn't a back plate to it. So we're going to come around here. If you want to come to this side, you can just wipe off that thermal paste. That stuff's crappy. Uh, use like a paper towel. We should have plenty around here. Okay. Now you're actually going to keep the dust cover on. I'll show you what you're going to do. Okay. So you're going to look for the little arrow. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to take the... Say something, G. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now Sorry. you're going to look for the same arrow on the, on the uh, cap, which is on the left bottom. I'm going to put the processor right there. I'm going to come down on it, 
push up, and then it'll come right off. Yeah, so now we've got our process associated. Don't need the cap anymore. You got that off. Now we're going to apply the thermal paste. So, you don't have to go crazy with this stuff. Some people use a giant blob, some people use a pea size. I use a little line. So we're just going to do it. It's a little more than I would have liked, but not the best applicator in the world. <laughs> okay, so. We're going to pick the orientation that we want the fan to go in. So our CPU is right there. So we're going to just go ahead, push it down, and lock her. Down, lock, down, lock. And you get the picture. So we're going to plug this bad boy in right there. Okay. Now, since we're already here, we're going to grab the RAM. We're going to put it into the first and third slots. The reason we're going to do that is so we can utilize the memory a little bit better. If you have a board that has four slots and you only have two sticks of RAM, put them in the first and third slot. When you add more RAM to it, then go into the second and fourth. Right. Since we're already down here, we might as well do our basic connections. Okay, I'll do it in there. Okay, I'll do it in there. Okay, I'll do it in this is always a nightmare, but luckily ASUS has a solution for that. Which we'll see right here. You can plug everything into this and then right into the board. So instead of having to fuss around in there, just do it this way. Okay, so we're going to do the HDLP. Now reset switch. Sky. Power switch. Now we're plus LED. Okay, we're all set. Okay, so right now what we're doing is we're adding another fan to the front of this just to increase the airflow a little bit. Uh, because we are using a stock cooler, heat not really going to be too much of an issue, but it's still something to consider. Now these are the OEM fans, so they, they come straight from NZXT. They're they're really they're good fans. Uh, they're not the quietest things in the world. If I was gonna go back and do this again, I'd probably use something like Noctua or uh, Stay Quiet. Stay Quiet doesn't perform quite as well as the Noctua fans do, but they are. I, I do believe. Don't quote me on this. They are like maybe like one decibel one decibel quieter so I mean if you're really big into having a very quiet computer I can't suggest them anymore and I, yeah.